Okay, welcome everybody. This is uh, Planes 2. Uh, I want to demo today in our, in our video how to use a shooting board. So what a shooting board is, is it's a means um, to cut a straight line. So what we've got here, we've, we've got, it's a very simple setup. I've got three examples of shooting boards here. One is set up as a, for a western style plane, which will give us, we'll use on the push cut through here. One's on the Japanese plane, which will give us the draw cut back through here, or pull cut through here. And one set up as an, as an either or um, to do a mitered cut. So to, to do inside boxes or, uh, or outside boxes, I guess, for that matter. Now, why they are so simple is, is the, we've just got two pieces of board here. It doesn't matter whether it's just offcuts, plywood, uh, particle board, uh, bits of timber, so long as the timber was stable. And if you can see here, if we look at the way that a typical plane is set up, on the base of the plane, on the sole, the knife, or the blade, isn't right up to the edge. So we need something to separate our workpiece from the board so and, and get the blade engaged in the wood. So that's all that is. So you'll see that on the video, that now we can see that the plane is running to the surface of our, our work platform or where the, the wood's gonna cut. So what I wanna demonstrate here is a couple of different methods. I wanna demonstrate how to fit a box lid successfully and clean up all the sawn edges you'll see you should see in reflection I hope that on the end grain which is the hardest thing to sand um, the saw marks in that we're going to clean that up with the plane and on the edges of the this board these saw marks as well and just an easy way to shoot uh, those edges in to fit that confined space so at the moment it does not fit it's too big you can see it won't fit in this plane uh, and this in side to side or that long to long there it won't drop in so it's slightly too big the other thing that I want to do is I want to cut quickly cut some um, so, some square ends some roughly cut some square ends so for those of you who don't have uh, circular saws uh, or even power, we don't need uh, to use electricity to cut these a really clean square edge or a really clean mitre. So if you're doing picture framing, uh, if we want to run a mitre on this corner, we can quickly cut it with a handsaw and it can be a pretty jaggy cut and clean it up with the hand plane and we'll have a perfect fit. So let me demo, first of all, let's, um, let's run this box. Okay, so you, you saw before the box, here's our box. We want to shoot that in. I'll, I'll demonstrate with both methods, with the Western style and with the Japanese style. So what I've got here is, is a fence. Let's call it a fence. It's just a means to hold that up against here and keep that nice and square. And what I do here is I use that edge, that, that raised uh, board surface, as our reference for square. So that is going to run there and I'm going to uh, address the plane with the board. So board's up against here, push the board in, and then cut. So we've taken a cut, there's still saw marks. It'll probably help if I run a bit of pencil on there for the video so that you can see where this, the, um, what I'm cutting. Cut, cut. Pretty much there, we've got a little bit left here. Pretty clean. Saw marks are gone. So that was our Japanese plane, Western style, same method. Plane's going to run through, run that board into the edge of the plane, and cut. 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 You should be able to see those shavings coming out of there. Quickly again. Looks pretty good anyway. I don't know whether you can see it in the video, but I'll pencil it. Clean, super clean. Obviously the plane needs to be super sharp. There's a little example of a little end grain shaving there. So it needs to be crazy sharp for end grain um, 
to cut effectively. So let's check this length. Look at that, perfect. Just dropped in there, just dropped in there. It's nice and square. But now our width is too wide. I did the end grain first because what is likely to happen when you cut end grain is to get a little chip. You should be able to see that. Can you see that little chip on the corner? There's probably one on this other corner as well, a little bit of a burr there. So we're gonna clean that off when we do our straight cuts. So same principle, push the wood to the plane, not the plane to the wood. So I don't wanna hang out here because then I'm not guaranteed square. I wanna push that up against, tight up against the fence because it's square and then plane up against that shoulder and then engage that wood into the plane. Then cut, cut. Still a little saw mark there. Pencil it again just so that you can see. Clean, super clean. And can you see a reflection in that video? That is like so super smooth. That's ready for a finish, no sanding required. Clean, beautiful. Do the other edge. Pencil it. Tiny little bit more in this corner, just out of square. Sweet, super clean. Let's check it. Still too wide there. Just very, very tight there. So just a little, a couple more strokes in the air, I reckon. Couple, three, close enough. Fits, perfect. Drops in there, tolerances are good. If I wanted to put a little bit more of a movement in there, I can. But now I've got surfaces that are just super clean, really hardly any sanding required. Maybe a little bit on the, on the end grain, but really there's no saw marks to negotiate there. It's all good to go. So that's one example, okay, to fit inside a box. Okay, all right, so next thing that I wanna do is demonstrate how to cut a 90 degree cut uh, without a power saw. And, and a super clean edge. So at the moment, we're, I've just got a rough, roughly, you know, dressed bit of wood. With my square, if this is my line, that's where I want to cut to, okay? All right, so I've, I've just run a pencil line, but I think more accurately, as a general rule, if you run a knife line, so if we've got an, a super accurate measurement that, that we need to hit, a pencil line has its own thickness. A knife line is, is a, a, just a cut, okay? So if we've got a knife line to work to, then we've got much more accuracy. So we don't have to worry about whether it's to one side or the other of the pencil line. Um, and we'll, we'll see on the shooting board, you'll, you'll see when we hit that knife line, okay? So because we'll, we'll have definition there. So you, you'll see that in a sec. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use just a Japanese saw to cut roughly or to cut just outside that knife line so we're going to cut on this side of that knife line so just disregard that pencil line in this case you can see that knife line in the video so this is called a bench hook so again this is another very good carriage or very good device uh, for cutting things accurately and what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to lay that onto this fence and I'm going to use my Japanese saw to cut just outside that line. Whoops. I run. Okay, so now you can see, you should be able to see there that there's a knife line still there and I'm about one millimeter away from it. Maybe just less than that. Now, now I'm gonna hit that line on the shooting board. So if you come in close here on the video, that, that point there, this, this surface here, we align with that knife line. Okay, we bring it up to that, right up onto the fence here. So run that, yep, got it. So what I'm gonna do now is this plane is gonna stop cutting because the knife doesn't come to the edge here. See how that, it's gonna stop cutting. It won't cut into this board here. It won't cut into my shooting board because the blade can't go any further because it's limited by here. So I've got a guaranteed stop. So what I'm gonna do is bring that knife line right up to that edge and then cut until it stops cutting. All right, that stopped cutting because it's stopped by 
that there. Now I'm going to check this point here. I've still got my knife line so I can take more. So that what that shooting board's giving me is guaranteed square. And now I'm just going to shuffle it across. Do that again. It stops cut. And now we're nearly up to the knife line there. And go one more time. Now we can see that we've just should be able to see just in here the imprint of that knife line. Can you see it just on the corner there? Yeah, yeah? super accurate. And that is dead square. Provided that the, the, uh, the shooting board is square, that is dead square. Perfectly square, perfectly square this way, perfectly square this way, and in no need for any further sanding so no saw mark all right so that's a square cut exactly the same and this is where it gets pretty cool if we want to do picture frames like what is picture frames all about the miter if we've got a mitered picture frame if that miter is ugly and dirty and open then it looks terrible okay so let's do the same thing with the picture frame if i run a 45 degree knife 45 degree line through here and then I'm going to do the same thing and cut on my bench hook and I'm just going to cut just outside that line terrible cut All right, so you can see I'm a mile away from my line there. Terrible cut, but that's okay because I'm not inside the line. Now we're gonna do the same thing here and shoot into or plane into that knife line. Okay, so same thing. If we use our 45 degree block of plywood, I've just got a block of plywood. And again, this is needs to, for this to work, this needs to be 45 degrees into here. So I'm just gonna clamp that now into this fence just got a hole in there so i can put a clamp in there just so that i've got it's not going to shift on me so that's now seated in there and that's moved that from 90 degrees to 45 degrees all right now if i move this board across here now i know that that's 45 degrees and i'm going to do the same thing so all i need to do is just hold that there and cut that with the plane until it stops. Plane stop cutting, nothing there. Have a look at my line. I'm just outside my knife line there. See it? All right, so I need to go a little bit further. And that is sweet. That's really good onto there. Let's do another one and see how that comes together so same principle let's just quickly mark that out off that because we don't need to worry about the length so much same thing all right same thing so this guy is going to go that way and you can see there just off the saw i cannot get that even though that's super clean and that cuts pretty straight it's still not a crisp you know like seamless joint do the same thing. You can see there even on that picture that that's out of square or that's out of 45 degrees. So I'm going to push it up to that line and I'm going to cut to that line, okay? And when it stops cutting, stop cutting. You can hear it, it's stopped. It's 45 degrees now. And if I run that now back to here, check that out. That is just like seamless there. I mean, it's, you can see a seam, but there's no gap. So when I glue that up, I've got no ugly, dirty glue line. And that is super square. Perfectly square into that corner. All right, so last example that I want to show you is an internal miter. So that's fine for a picture frame. 
But if I want to put a liner inside here, and I want to mitre that on the corner, so instead of running the mitre on this plane, I want to run the mitre on this plane, through here, then, and put a lining inside that box, then typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this to this size, so to this internal size, at that line. And then I'm going to plane that mitre in, so that it's got an internal here, and then it's got an internal here, and this one meets at 45 degrees. So let's quickly cut that out, just cut this square, just outside the square. Do the same here. Well, that one's already square. It's a bit short. Just cut that square, just very roughly again. Just for demo purposes. And then we're going to bring this over to our 45 degree shooting board. And here's the only difference between the two is this lays now at 45 degrees. Yeah. So, same principle. I'm going to address that into here and we're going to cut now have a look at where we're at you can see the the corners getting cut off that if you wanted to speed up this process obviously we'd take that corner off all right so now we're at 45 degrees so we've cut that now, it's square because this is square and that is now 45 degrees across here. That's just an example of my corner. That's still some residual from that previous demo. But we'll do that with the other piece. Same thing. A little bit more. That looks clean. Now we've got our 45 degrees into here, and let's put that in the box, see if there's any gaps. Hopefully it fits, yes it does. Apart from my pencil lines, let's put uh, we'll go this one, so we don't see those ugly lines. Perfectly clean, apart from that pencil line, perfectly clean in that corner. All right, so there's three examples of Cutting, using a shooting board to cut clean, straight, accurate lines, provided that those shooting boards are accurate in themselves. Now, I said before, I said previously, if, if you can do this without um, power tools, obviously we need to make these shooting boards, so which is going to be pretty tricky to make those without, um, if you don't have power tools, you know, to hog out those those members. So if we, um, you know, you could. Certainly you could, um, you could come into a class and make them in a class, that would be perfect. Um, or we could also um, make them available online as just a, a, an aid, a tooling aid. So, so we might even make them online in our shop, you know, just as, as a tooling, uh, some tooling assistance. So thanks for your time.